Today is March 9th, and we're going to take a look at statin side effects today. Uh, we'll look at how they develop, why they develop. But we also have to, have to think about uh, the fact that statins are big business. Notice from 2016, quarter one 2016, number one prescription drug filled was Lipitor, statin medication. Number seven was Zocor, statin medication. So this is big business and statin medications are uh, a billion, uh, multi-billion dollar business every year. So uh, it is a good business and if everyone's cholesterol was normalized that would be bad for their business. Good for us but bad for their business. I'm not going to go through the details of cholesterol but if you want you can and I would suggest looking at the two previous videos I did Cholesterol, the Big Fat Myth, Part 1 and Part 2, and they explain cholesterol metabolism a little differently than today because they were going to be talking about, about uh, the, uh, the side effects of statins. So first, the reason why, of course, statins are prescribed is because of uh, elevated cholesterol, and that is, that is the, 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 the big advertising issue, and it's the big um, health care medical disease scare that goes on, the whole issue of, of cholesterol, and that's why I suggest watching these two videos. The interesting thing about statins, uh, the reason why that they're prescribed is, of course, for to protect and help the vascular system. And it turns out that, and this was published over a decade ago, endothelial dysfunction. Now, endothelial cells, they line your arteries. And when they are engaged in inflammatory activity, they help to drive atherosclerosis. So this endothelial inflammation is associated with high lipids and atherosclerosis, and it turns out that endothelial inflammation is restored, normalized, improved, reduced, so endothelial inflammation is reduced prior to significant changes in cholesterol levels. So what we want, of course, is to reduce inflammation in the vascular system. That's what statins do, and they do a good job of that. Now, the problem is they also have side effects that we're going to talk about in a little while. So what do statins do to reduce inflammation? Well, lots of things. Uh, nuclear factor kappa B, I described that in several other videos as well as in my Deflame Diet book. Many of you will probably recognize C-reactive protein, a well-known, and it really should, should be high-sensitivity C-reactive protein. That is the that's also called cardiac CRP. So CRP is a, a measure of, of ongoing inflammation. There are other anti-inflammatory effects from statins that have nothing to do with um, uh, lipid lowering. And here they are. I'm not going to read these, but um, if you want, you can pause and, and take a look. Now, the problem is, coupled with anti-inflammatory benefits, Statins have side effects. And the reason why typically for medications is that medications compared to uh, herbs, for example, or other nutrients, herbs and nutrients, they push metabolism in one way or the other. Uh, medications can substantially push metabolism or disrupt metabolism. And as a consequence of the inhibitory effects of medication or the excitatory effects, you will also get side effects that you typically do not get with natural substances. And if you compare, for example, aspirin or non-steroidal drugs to something anti-inflammatory like turmeric or ginger, extremely incredible safety profile of ginger and turmeric, not so great for long-term use of NSAIDs and aspirin at anti-inflammatory levels. So what are some side effects? So this comes from WebMD, and you can see most common side effects from statin use include headaches, down to rash, constipation, drowsiness, dizziness, muscle aches, tenderness, weakness. I mean, who needs this, particularly as you're aging, of course, right? But the problem is that we are not really given a good picture of why cholesterol elevates. And I described that in the previous two videos, and I'll show it again in a little while. So what are some other side effects? This is uh, accessed March 7th, 2018 from WebMD. Earlier, uh, in earlier years, uh, we were told that all statins, this came from USA Today in 2004, USA Today 2004, all statins are associated with muscle problems. Most of them not fatal, 
So what symptoms? Muscle pain, weakness, fatigue, dark urine, nausea, and vomiting. Now, I'll tell you, all you got to do to normalize cholesterol is to normalize your blood glucose by get, getting rid of sugar and flour and refined oils, and uh, all of your lipid and glucose markers will normalize, and one will not need to take a statin. But the average person has a hard time doing that, unfortunately. So long-term use of statins substantially increased developing, de developing polyneuropathy. This is most commonly associated with this, typically with with. Uh, it's called diabetic polyneuropathy. Statins also commonly cause fatigue, memory loss, cognitive deficits, severe irritability, and aggression have also been attributed to statin use. And you can see how long ago these were published. So we're going to look at references one through four. You can pause and take a look. Uh, several of these are free if you wish to read them, but we go back as far as 2002. And then up to 2004. Here we go, 2004. So these side effects are not so awesome. Now, more recently, a much more dramatic uh, paper was 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 published looking at statin side effects. Statins stimulate atherosclerosis, that which they're supposed to inhibit, and heart failure. And so this was published in Expert Reviews in Clinical Pharmacology in 2015. Here are the four factors that they talk about. Depleting coenzyme Q10, depleting heme A. Whenever you see CoQ10 and heme A in terms of body function, you want to think of ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it is the body's energy currency. Without ATP, the party's over. So we have to make ATP. And ATP is made in these specialized organelles. They're called uh, mitochondria. So statins are going to deplete CoQ10. I'll show you how. They're going to deplete heme. I'll show you how. I'll show you, explain again what that is in one little while. Uh, vitamin K2 has become a very popular supplement. Well, in the human body, we convert vitamin K1 from green vegetables into K2, and this is inhibited with statins. And statins also inhibit selenium proteins, one of which is glutathione peroxidase, which is involved in our antioxidant system. So when we deplete ATP, we deplete K2. Now, what K2 does is it keeps calcium out of blood vessels, one of its three main effects. And then, of course, uh, if we lose uh, antioxidant enzymes, we become more inflamed. So free radicals turn on, inflammation turns on. Vitamin K2 is depleted, so we, 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 we can calcify um, vascular system, coronary, and, and other arteries, and then we deplete energy. This is not good for the cardiovascular system or, or really any other part of the human body. So more recently, and this just came out the other day, Medscape published a new paper. You can see it was March 6th, 2018. Statins affect skeletal muscle performance. What they did is they looked at statins <clears throat> in uh, or muscle performance in patients who are taking statins who did not have muscle symptoms, and they looked at muscle performance in patients who are taking statins who did have muscle symptoms. So they're looking at statin takers to see if energy metabolism, now again, when we're talking about energy metabolism, we're talking about ATP production being reduced. So what did they find? They found, you see on the bottom, they found, this suggests down below the uh, disturbances in mitochondrial oxidative capacity, that is, that means ATP synthesis. So reduced ATP synthesis is going to occur with statin use, even in patients who do not have muscle complaints. So statins are not good for skeletal muscle health long term. Short term, I don't think really most medications are an issue, but long term, we really want to be anti-inflammatory and healthy. So let's look at how statins work. And this is something that the average person is never told, which to me is quite problematic because it would help to set people free. So this is looks complicated, but you can I'll show you how it's not a big deal to look at it all. Up top circled is glucose, G-L-U, glucose. Down the bottom right, cholesterol. This means that in the human body, we convert glucose into cholesterol. This pathway has been known for 20 years. I put this together image 20 years ago. Now you see this box sitting right here that is empty. And you have an asterisk, a green asterisk here. 
this is how this substance called HMG-CoA is converted into ketones, which are highly anti-inflammatory. Otherwise, HMG-CoA gets converted into CoQ10, as I mentioned before, heme A, and cholesterol. So it turns out that when we overeat sugar and flour and our blood glucose level rises and stays elevated during our life, insulin stimulation is the outcome. Now, insulin stimulates the enzyme that converts HMG-CoA down to cholesterol. So clearly we can see that if we overeat sugar and flour and become hyperglycemic, and this is called, referred to clinically as metabolic syndrome, syndrome X is a synonym, as well as insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So glucose converts into cholesterol, and this synthetic process is augmented by insulin. Now, what's really interesting is that statins inhibit the same enzyme that insulin stimulates. So if we normalize our circulating glucose, our blood glucose levels, and really the best place to be is to be around fasting of, a fasting glucose of 80 is really the best place to be. But if we're below 100, we're typically fine. Above 100 is referred to as metabolic syndrome. And so when we have metabolic syndrome, we have HMG-CoA reductase. This enzyme that converts HMG-CoA to cholesterol is turned on, and so we're going to have lipid abnormalities, and the immediate thing that is done is that a patient is put on statin medication. So statins are going to inhibit this enzyme that converts HMG-CoA from glucose down to cholesterol. That is what they do. So the first thing that happens is we get inhibition of cholesterol synthesis. Now you can see down below important hormones, vitamin D, and fat digesting bile acids are all made from cholesterol. So cholesterol is not some evil thing. We need cholesterol. And it turns out that cholesterol is produced in the same pathway as heme A, vital for energy production, and CoQ10, vital for energy production. So what else does taking a statin do. Now, short term, again, I don't think it's a big deal. Long term, problematic. So we lose CoQ10. CoQ10 production is basically cut in half or a similar percentage reduction as cholesterol. Remember, remember CoQ10, energy. Now, the thing about this that's interesting is that uh, this was known early on in the 80s or 90s when, when statins were, were developed. Each of these patents, you can Google US patent and these numbers, and you'll see that the manufacturers of statins also created a statin that contained CoQ10. Now, this has never been put on the market, but they knew that statins depleted CoQ10 years and years and years ago. Now, a lot of people think that if you just take statins that will uh, adjust CoQ10, that will handle the energy crisis. And for a lot of people, that is not the case. So let's look at this again, how this works. So glucose becomes cholesterol. Insulin stimulates the conversion. Statins are used. Statins are going to inhibit cholesterol. They're going to inhibit energy-producing CoQ10. They're going to inhibit energy-producing heme A. Look to the right. Here is heme A. The human body makes heme A uh, by utilizing these nutrients. So the production of heme A is nutrient-dependent. So the idea that we should just willy-nilly block this enzyme right here and end up blocking a heme A and CoQ10, quite problematic. Also shown is that uh, statins inhibit this what's called complex three of the electron transport chain. Now that's a, you can see it down here, electron transport. Really all that means is the pathway that makes ATP. You got four complexes, one, two, three, and four. So CoQ10 uh, is going to shuttle into the electron transport chain and drive three. Heme A is going to drive four, and complex three uh, is going to be inhibited directly by statins. So in three areas, we are going to have statin inhibition of energy production. That is really quite problematic. So long term, quite problematic. Short term, not a big deal. So what should we do? 
we should simply embrace the fact that overeating sugar and flour that leads to hyperglycemia <clears throat> and metabolic syndrome, <clears throat> sorry, type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance. So hyperglycemia from sugar and flour excess calorie consumption is going to turn on insulin and that will lead to excess cholesterol production, elevation of LDL, lowering of HDL and the other lipid abnormalities that we know about, increased triglycerides. So what should we do? Well, we need to get rid of sugar and flour consumption. So very, very simple. Um, many books talk about it. My book does too. The idea is to get rid of sugar, flour, and refined oil calories and replace them with vegetation. Extremely, extremely easy thing to do to avoid the pharmaceutical industrial complex, avoid a reliance on statins, and all of those related side effects.